it in the back that's frozen up. <laughs> Had to go get my hoodie out of the truck. We want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight for all our prayer requests that we have. We want to remember all of them. Continue to pray for all the families that have lost loved ones. Those that have been sick. Those that have been attacked by the enemy. If you have a need, just let it be known by the lifting of your hand. Brother Courtney, take us to the Lord on behalf of all these requests. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight asking for forgiveness for all of our trespasses, Lord. And we know that in this brief moment of righteousness that's granted only by you, that you'll hear our prayers and, and answer them, Lord. We know that, that if we stand here at the throne of grace boldly, that you'll take these petitions to heart and, and, and fulfill them for us. And we ask this in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. Boy, the world sure is in chaos right now. Amen. It's in confusion, but God is not the author of confusion. That's right. Amen. Amen. He's still on the throne. He's still where he needs to be. He's still right. doing the things he's going to do. And everything that is happening in the world today, God's got a plan. That's right. Mm -hmm. It didn't catch him by surprise on anything that's happening. Uh, he knows that the, the end times are here. He knows that the end times kingdom is here. The Antichrist, the one world government is here. And it's very important we need to get rid of the chaos in our life and start listening to the voice of God. Amen. Amen. We need to start hearing what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Yeah. And there's no greater message that we have right now than that of Christmas to bring our perspective back where it needs to be, and that is on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 But I want to preach a message I haven't preached before. Uh, God put this on my heart in Luke chapter 1. I want to start reading at verse 13. The Bible says this, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 You know what? We need this today. This story right here is for today. I know it was for that time yeah. and that place right then and there. But you got to understand the parallel. This was uh, God sending somebody before Jesus came into the world to announce him and to be a forerunner for him. But now as Jesus is getting ready to come back, we all need to be John the Baptist. Amen. We all need to be the forerunner for Christ. We all need the power that John the Baptist had, the foresight, the insight, and, and the attitude to yeah. put up with this world. you got to understand John the Baptist was in the world and the forerunner for Jesus uh, when Herod was the ruler, yeah. a wicked ruler. Man. One that did despicable things at Jesus' birth, killing uh, all the male children in the region from two years old and younger, doing away with them. 
Can you see a parallel today mm -hmm. with all the abortion that's going on in America? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That since 1973, uh, uh, 60 up to 65 million babies have been aborted in the United States of America. Can you see the parallel of the things that are happening to the children? You know, it wasn't long ago, and yes, Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself. Uh, if you didn't have a clue about that, he did not hang himself. He was killed. Because he knew a lot of things about a lot of powerful people mm -hmm. that were doing a whole lot of bad things to children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. When his girl that got arrested before she could jump country, the, the FBI, the CIA, and different Homeland Security started busting different groups that had many children as sex slaves. Mm -hmm. And this is the time right before Jesus is coming back. You Amen. see, before he came in, the children were persecuted. He went out, the children were persecuted. Before he comes back, the children are being persecuted. You see, right. history repeats itself. That's right. That's right. It needs to repeat itself because we need John the Baptist. We need a forerunner for him to return. We all need to be that. It's not the preacher's job to go and lead everybody to Christ. Right. It is the preacher's job to strengthen the flock. Mm -hmm. It is sheep yeah. that begat sheep. Mm -hmm. So sheep need to be John today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in verse 15, he said uh, uh, these words right here, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. You know what that tells me? He'll be separate from the world. We are, be, are to be called to be separated from this world. Amen. Right. Yeah. We are to be different than the world. You know what? And I'm going to get in a rant and I'm going to uh, make some people mad and they might uh, disown me and discredit me. I don't care. I didn't come to do their will. I come to do the will of the Lord tonight. Come on, man. But I'm going to tell you what. If you have to put concert lights with different colors in your church to get the world in there, the world is all you're going to have. Amen. Right. Come on. We ought to present Amen. them something different than what this world is. That's right. Yeah. You see, you got so much apostasy in the church today. And Jesus said, in the end times, there's going to be a, a false Christ and false apostles everywhere. And you see it, and it's in the church. Right. Amen. That's right. Yes, it is. The Bible says it's no uh, marvel that they're transformed into an angel of light. He's talking about people in the church. He's talking about church leaders. He's talking about preachers that are over congregations being uh, Satan in light clothing yeah. in these end times. Amen. The word of these apostles, what John the Baptist preached, was a simple message. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. And in yes, most of is. these churches, you never hear the word repentance mm. because you never hear about sin. You just made right. bad choices. Mm -hmm. right. No, you sinned. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you've fallen short of the glory of God and you need a savior and you need to turn from your wicked ways and acknowledge that he is the only way, the only truth, and the only life there is. That's what John the Baptist was bold in when he was preaching by the riverside. Amen. He didn't timidly go to people. He said, he called, called the uh, the Sadducees and Pharisees, you bunch of snakes, who told you to come out and escape the destruction that is about to come? Yeah. You know what? He didn't mince his words. Mm -hmm. We get mad if the preacher says something off to us. Mm -hmm. yep. If the preacher reproves us, rebukes us. Mm -hmm. You know what? You wouldn't have made it in John the Baptist era. Mm -hmm. right. You wouldn't have made it around the apostles. <laughs> You lied to one of them. They were so full of the Holy Ghost, you dropped dead when you come in there in the church and lied to them. Amen? True. Man. It's in a historical record. That's right. 
We see the apostasy going on, but we need to be like John the Baptist. We need to be separated from the world. Romans 12 and 2. It says it plainly, be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And only then the second half of this verse is relevant to you. When you've done that, it says that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right, amen. You can't do that unless you uh, 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 get away from the conformity of this world and transform your mind. You can't see what God's will is. We amen. understand that because you see uh, uh, people that call themselves Christians get into this, get into that, vote for this, vote for that. Right, amen. You ought to be able to discern what is evil and what is good. Yeah. In the days now that they say, and Jesus said that there'll come a time when they uh, will call evil good and good evil. Right. We're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. Why are we there? Because no one has uh, transformed their mind and gotten away from the conformity of this world. Yeah. Right. You can't see it. Your vision is skewed while you're still in this world. Your vision, your eyes see the worldly things uh, uh, that you lust after in this world. Right. We need to be a people that set apart a peculiar people. John was peculiar. Yes, amen. He had animal skins on. Mm -hmm. Got my deer tonight. <laughs> he ate wild lo locusts and wild honey. He ate bugs. It, it don't get, it, your preacher ain't going to get up here and eat no bugs. It ain't happening. I'm not going to, you know what, I'd love this place filled, but it ain't going to be by eating bugs. It's going to be by preaching the word. It's going to be by be delivering what thus saith the Lord is. That's right. You see, there's so many people pleasers in the pulpit today, and these people pleasers, they, they say anything. You know what? If you got any hill song church music, you need to throw it in the trash. <laughs> right, man. You better read up on what the hill song pastor just got caught doing and being a, being a part. You ought to see some of the things he said on The View and on Oprah, along with Joel Osteen. If you know them and you got them, you listen to them, you better throw it in the trash. <laughs> Yeah. You better throw it away. Yeah. There's gonna be some people mad at me. Oh, uh, he's you know what, you're judging him. No, I'm I know them by the fruits Fruit. that they bear. Right. Amen. By their fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are to call out apostasy. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are to call out unrighteousness. Yeah. Yep. yeah. If you got Kenneth Copeland in your in your travel bag, you better chuck him away. He's worth almost $800 million by fleecing the flock. Mm -hmm. You know what? Ezekiel tells you a lot about that. The ones that feed themselves instead of the flock of God. Mm -hmm. You got pastors in the pulpit today that before, when, a, when they go for a church opening, will say, the first question is, how much does it pay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Man. Yeah. yeah. How much does it pay? Mm -hmm. It don't. I don't care if it pays well as long as it's got an out of this world retirement. That's right. Yeah. Come on. That's right. That's what I'm in it for. That's yeah. right. The retirement on the other side. Mm -hmm. But we need to be set apart from this world. We need to be a peculiar people, one that is filled with the Holy Ghost. In the second part of this verse, he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. You know, when he was born, when was you born? You was right. born. I was born July 24th, 1994, 7.32 p.m. down there. And it wasn't a little while later on that I got filled with the <coughs> Holy Ghost from yeah. the womb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
If we ain't filled with the Holy Ghost, we're not walking in power. John 16 and 8 says he'll come, that Holy Ghost, to reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Amen. Yes. What did John do? He was so full of the Holy Ghost. He told people, you better get yourself right. Mm -hmm. He told them Sadducees and Pharisees, like I said, you bunch of snakes, who told you to flee from the wrath that is to come? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He could discern who needed God and who didn't. Because the Holy Ghost told him, and the Holy Ghost put power in him, the power of conviction yeah. to convict by the words that come out of his mouth. Yeah. We understand that because he was down there on the River Jordan. He was down there and baptizing people daily. Mm -hmm. Amen. They come to him daily. Yeah. Because of his preaching and power in the Holy Ghost. Because of his discernment in the Holy Ghost. That, that Holy Ghost to even tell you this, in Romans 8 and 26, it helps our infirmities and makes intercession for us with groanings and utterings that cannot be uh, uh, heard. Right, man. In these end times today, in this chaos, you know what? It gives us discernment, but it also helps when we, when we get weak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? I tell you what. If you if you've been living the Christian life, you know what? Twenty twenty seems like it's twenty years long. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, just by the draining in your spiritual, with all the wickedness around you, if you don't feel a draining in your spirit, if you don't feel that joy and that hope and that peace begin to start to fade and you need to get with that Holy Ghost to get it filled back up again. That's the only way you're going to survive these times. Man. Only way John the Baptist survived those times was because he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. He was set apart. He was not conformed to the world, but transformed in his mind. Yeah. yeah. That Holy Ghost leads to discernment and power of specifics. Yeah. You know what? God deals in specifics. He don't deal in generalities. Right. Amen. When he wants to get your attention, he don't go to your brother, your mother, or anybody else and whisper in their head. Let them know I want to talk to them. He comes and specifically talks to you. That's right. Yeah. He comes and specifically tells you. You know what? He whispers to you every day, but do you hear it? Right. Every day God is talking to his children just like you talk to yours. Yeah. And just like them, you ain't listening either. It makes me sad because with John down there baptizing all these people, I believe he got an insight and knew exactly that he was baptizing. He was going to tell them, look, here cometh the, the, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And he, I believe the Holy Ghost even told him, look here, these same people that are down here repenting are going to be yelling crucify him when he goes before Pilate. Right. Yeah, man. But you do it anyway. That's right. Yeah. There's a lot of people you preach to, witness to. You know before you say anything to them, the chances of them turning back to the world is very high. Yep. Amen. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you got to preach to them. Yep. You got to teach to them yep. anyway. Yep. 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 Because if you don't, the blood is on your hands. That's right. Amen. You know what? The blood is just not on the preacher's hands. Come on. Everybody you come across mm -hmm. that you know that God puts an unction on your spirit to give them uh, uh, some advice like repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand and you don't do it because you're scared or because you fear what they might think of you, you're going to have to have an account in heaven for that. Yes, amen. amen. Their blood is on your hands mm -hmm. if God put them on your heart. Right. 
you know what? You're, you're still responsible for the ones you didn't listen about. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Verse 16 said he would convince many toward God in these last days. How many wants hell full or how many wants to drag as many out of hell to heaven as you can possibly take? Amen. You should never even want your worst enemy to go to hell. All right. All right. How, how long has it been since you convinced somebody that God is real? Right. Hmm. When was the last time you witnessed to someone you really in love full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit guiding your words and sat down and said, brother or sister, I am in such turmoil because I want to know you're headed to heaven. Yeah. I care and love about you enough to tell you that there is a Savior that died for you. Amen. And if you don't get your life right, you're going to bust hell wide open. Amen. You know what most people say today? I'm offended. You're judging me. Judgment starts at the house of God. Amen. Yes. It doesn't say don't judge. Do you understand the Bible doesn't say don't judge? It says first take the, the beam that is in your eye out. And then, then you can see clearly enough to remove the splinter in someone else's. Yeah. We judge every day. Mm -hmm. you, you think uh, uh, John the Baptist went against God's word when he called the Sadducees and Pharisees a bunch of snakes? Don't you think he was judging them? He had a right to. Yeah. Their fruits gave them away. That's right. Amen. And you know what he was telling them? Just like Jude says, there's some of them you got to jerk from the fire, even hating the garment that's spotted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? We, we get kick gloves when we're dealing with, especially with family, because we don't want them to think we're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> We don't want yeah. them to uh, not come around us anymore, not call us on the phone anymore. You know what? I'm old enough right now. If you don't call me on the phone, I got peace and joy. Yeah. yeah. You know, there, there, there's family members that that have went to this church that don't go here no more. You know what? It hurt my feelings at first, but now I'm over it. I got to be about God's business. Amen. Yeah. Right. Prophet was out honoring his own mm -hmm. country and his own household. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to do it anyway. Yep. Yeah. yeah, right. You understand that John the Baptist was Jesus' first cousin. There's a family connection there. That's right. James chapter 5 and verse 20. You know this. For he which converts the sinner mm -hmm. from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be great if that old grumpy neighbors of yours, you witnessed to them, they got saved? Yeah. <laughs> right. Wouldn't it be great if that boss that is always upon you for not doing uh, uh, what they think you ought to do, how you ought to do it, when you ought to do it, at the time you ought to do it, right? got saved and full of love, peace, and joy? Amen. You see... Regardless of what you believe, they're looking for someone right. to witness to them. Yep. Amen. They're looking for someone that they can count on praying for them. Man. They are looking for the kingdom of, in, of heaven in us. They was doing that in John the Baptist day. They were looking at this wild man that was eating locusts and honey 
dressed in animal skins. And they said something's different about him because the way he talks, he don't talk like he's somebody out there. He talks like he's somebody up there. Because yeah. he talks in power. He talks in authority. Amen. Because he had that Holy Ghost that moved yeah. upon his words. Our focus should not be on the chaos, but the saving of hell-bound souls. We're more focused on this pandemic than we are trying to get somebody uh, to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yeah. We're more worried about who's going to be president than we are who's going to be in hell. Yeah. Right. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. Verse 17, it said, God's spirit and power will be with him. He'll have the spirit of Elijah on him. Mm -hmm. You know what Ephesians 6 and 10 says? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yep. Yeah. How strong do you want to be? You know, the Bible says this, and I'm going to paraphrase this scripture right here. He'd go exceedingly and abundantly above that which we could ask or think by the power that works in us. Yep. Yeah. You see, we forget that second part of that verse, by the power that works in us. If the power ain't working in you, you ain't getting exceedingly and abundantly above that which you could ask or think. That power has to be working in us, Amen. through us, for us, yeah. and by us. Right. Second Timothy, you know this verse well, 1 and 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. You know what? The, the, the biggest antichrist spirit out there right now is the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear has captured so many Christians or so-called Christians. Right, amen. If you're a Christian, you're not supposed to have fear. You're supposed to have power and love and a sound mind. Amen. Fear is not one thing that God gives you. Right. Matter of fact, it is the devil that gives you fear. Amen. God gives you faith, which is power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. In these end times, you think this is the last pandemic that's coming? No. no. I got news for you. Jesus said there'll be uh, uh, diseases in different places all the time <laughs> during this end time. Get ready. There's going to be earthquakes and floods. Right. They were talking the other day about an earthquake possibly uh, uh, near, I won't say Alaska, and California. Well, California got them all the time. Oh, yeah. Right. But if the right one hits, mm -hmm. it's going to be bad. Yep. Right. It's going to be bad. You know what? There is a fear that we have, even if we're not scared of a pandemic, we have a fear that has infected the church. It is the fear of fear of failure, but the fear of failure brings failure. Amen. Yeah. We don't want to witness to somebody because we might fail in our words. And we fear that. Yeah. We might we fear to speak to someone because we don't understand and we fear how they may take it. Yeah. Amen. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Fear of what is in the world brings lost opportunity. Fear sets opportunity aside. Fear will nullify God's will right. for your day. Amen. Forget your prayer. It, 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 you, God's got a will for you every day. A plan for you every day. And fear 
of what's going on in the world wipes out the opportunity of that day. Yeah. He goes on to say to make ready a people that's ready for Jesus. When John the Baptist was baptizing in the river, there was one that came to him one day. And he said, look, behold, the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And that lamb walked up to him and said, I need you to baptize me. And John got fearful. The first time he had ever been fearful in his life, he said, Lord, it is you that needs to baptize me. And Jesus said, let it not be so. Let it be so that you are going to baptize me. Yeah. That's why John said, here comes one. I can't even untie or tie his shoelaces. Yep. I really believe because of the fear he had when Jesus told him to baptize him, set him up for an opportunity for Herod to take his head. Yeah. We understand by the book of Job what fear did to Job. Job said, the thing I feared the most has come upon me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fear opened the door for the opportunity for Satan to do anything he wanted to to him, but take his life. Yeah. Fear opened up John to what Herod wanted to do to him. Amen. Titus 2 and 13, you know this, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Have you prepared somebody, made a people ready by giving them hope that Jesus is coming soon? You see, that's our hope. Amidst the chaos, amidst the confusion right now, our hope is at any moment Jesus Christ can descend from heaven and immediately we be in the spirit and be in the clouds. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And then you don't have to be in the chaos anymore. You can be in the chaos and still have peace mm -hmm. and still yeah. have joy, mm -hmm. That's right. still yeah. have happiness. We're supposed to be getting each other ready. We're supposed to be encouraging one another. Uh, you know what the Bible says? Amen. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, it's a sound of a loud trump. You know, at the end of that verse, what he says? Encourage one another with these words. Yeah. Give hope one to another. Yeah. Christians are running around like, like they're on fire. Yeah. And they ain't talking about it in a good way. They walking around like a chicken with the head cut off. You know, my mama used to, we, we used to go pick our dinner out in the yard. Yeah. 